Uh, you may have also noticed that I've actually welded this to the table. Hey Shed Corgi, ready for another episode? The $200 Bender Builder. Bender Builder? The $200 Bender Builder. So, what we have here, 100 by 75 by 10 mil angle. So the 10 mil is the thickness of the steel. And 65, 65 by 10 mil. We also have some big bolts, some huge bolts, and a bloody great pair of hinges. Now, the hinges came from a trailer supplies. Now, fairly simple build. What we're going to do is have these two pieces hinge together. So, kind of like that, with a hinge in each end. And so then it'll have one of these bolts at each end somehow to clamp this piece down. And then it's going to use one of these. Now that extra big nut in the middle, that will get welded in. So that I'll take the end off there, it'll have a socket, and then there'll be a bar from here down to each end. So then we can tension up in here and keep that straight because it will want to bend in the middle so we're going to start with the hinges now they're 32 millimeters in diameter so I'm going to cut 100 millimeters and come in 16 mil on each face on each end of the big ones and that will give the spot for this. Now, I'm going to cut this down about 25 or 30 millimeters because I don't need all of this. And then once that's cut down, that these two pieces will get clamped together and then this will be put into place and then welded. You gotta be careful when you're welding hinges that you're welding the right pieces to the right spot. Sometimes they get messed up. So, start with cutting. So I've changed my mind. I'm only coming 90 millimeters along because these pieces are 1500 long and I want to be able to put a 1200 sheet in there so they're getting shortened now I've got all four of these ends cut out for those to sit in now I've cut them out 16 millimeters in each direction so that the corner there lines up with the center of the pivot point. That's important. Now, because I've only got 25 mil there to weld this to, I'm going to shorten this a bit, probably 15 millimeters. And then I'll have a bit more here to weld onto. And there's still plenty of pivot point there. Now at the moment I'm going to leave the ends so they'll be overhanging. I might cut them off later because that's just a solid block. Could be a good lifting point. Yeah, so next step, cut this down 15 millimeters, and then we can start welding things together. So I've shortened the hinges. Let's push this. So the next thing, it's not necessary, but it's all a good idea though. I'm going to drill a hole, then tap it and put a grease nipple in here so that I can grease this pivot point. Because that's a good idea. So, drill some holes, tap some threads.
we've got the thread tapped in there and grease nipples on there so the grease nipples going to fit down through the gap so that it's never going to interfere with anything else all right this is nearly ready to assemble all I've got to do now is mark where this is and I've got to chop a section out of there bevel it right back so that I can get a good deep penetration weld in there and then grind the surface back flush afterwards so more cutty grunty time that's about it So I've got this bit cut off this side and the centre bit cut off this side so when I put the, the block in there and I do a big weld in there I can grind the surface back and it'll still be lots of weld. So that's the purpose of that. Now I've got to clamp these two pieces together. Somewhere up there so then I can put the hinge into place and start tacking it in So the beveled pieces are where it's getting welded, so the flat sides pieces, I need some clearance on them. So what I've done is got some leftover cardboard from the templates and basically just wrapped it around. So that sits in there. So the cardboard will give me a gap all the way around about 1.5 mil so now I'll just tack it now in the end here I'm going to tack all the way around and then I'm going to cut two of these tacks off later but that will help hold everything solid while I get all the tacks in and pull the cardboard out so as long as it's in the right place I'll weld it Alright, this end's got a lot of weld on it, I'll go weld the other end and then I'll take the clamps off and make sure it still pivots before I fully weld it. Both hinges are all tacked up and in alignment as best I can, so I take this off it should hinge. Just like that. That seems to work, so doesn't feel like the hinge pins are binding at all, so I will weld the heck out of this. That all works now. I did two hot runs to fill up the V on each side and then I did one weld on the back side of the V just to fill it all in. Now all I have to do is take these welds back flush with the, the faces so that it will go all the way over in both directions and then we can start making the handles. So a bit of grinding.
that should do it now we'll make the top clamp the next step is mounting this piece now the edge of that needs to be lined up just back from this folding line here now you want that back the thickness of the material that you're going to be folding because when this comes up you need the thickness of your material but gap there for the material that you're folding because otherwise it just puts too much pressure on this trying to push it that way and on this trying to push it that way and bad things happen so yeah so when that sets up that needs to be three mil back from that edge so to do that this piece needs to be the length to fit in between the hinges so I've got to cut it down first Now we've got that cut down to fit. He's going to go about there somewhere. And we're going to weld this piece on the end so that I can have a hole in there, the nut on top to clamp him down with. Got to put some big holes in. So that's next. So, what I've done there is this piece is the offcut of one of the hinges. That's one of the long bolts. A hex in the middle so that I can get my big shifter and tighten this up and put a lot of pressure on it. So, all that's left now is to run a bar from here down to each side. But as it is, it should bend once I put a handle on it. I'm going to find some springs to put over these big bolts so that when I loosen these off, that will actually lift the plate up. 3mm alloy. Let's see what happens. Let's try and bend. And that is why we need that piece in the middle. That down there. Him up there. Some pipes coming from here out and then that can be wound to put lots of tension on the middle so it can't lift up.
All right. I think I made a heavier table. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a lot of three mil folds, but <clears throat> we've got one. I call that a fold. It'll be a lot easier to do one and two mil sheet metal. That's a nice radius fold there. It's quite good, I think. Now, when this is all bolted down to my big chassis table, where the table won't lift up and move, and I can get a bit more leverage on it, it will do three mil. It should do two mil steel just fine. I'm thinking in the future I'll build another set of these that'll have a bit of rod up each side of different sizes so I can do, well, that's the radius that it'll do with this curve. Then I'll get one or two sizes larger than that, so it might do up to a, a 15 mil radius. Should be interesting. But, that is a $200 folder. I'm pretty happy with that. Needs a few refinements. But, that's all the time I've got for this week. As always, customise everything.